gosh, these past few weeks have been crazy. Since the new year began, I've been introducing and reintroducing some practices into my life and prioritizing myself, which I don't think you should feel guilty or selfish saying that. I think it's important and valid to cultivate that self-love, pay attention to yourself. Throughout all of these new and old things I'm doing, I have been feeling like I'm living in this euphoric state right now. And trust me, it's not like that all the time. It can't be. There has to be that yin and yang and balance to life. But I have been feeling so energized and inspired. And because of that, I want to make a video sharing some of the things I've been doing that have gotten me to this point. So I started paying attention more and more to what I was doing every day and started to compile a list of them. And honestly, I'm really excited to pass this on to everyone because I feel as though when you are able to create this light within yourself, you can then share it with those around you. And I've been trying to do that with my friends and I want to give that to you as well. And the first thing I have on my list is listening to your body. And this branches into so many ideas, but I think it's the key, or at least the first step, to becoming in tune and aligned with yourself, getting a grip on understanding who you are, and just feeling really good. My first branch off of this idea is finding the balance of your boundaries and when to say no, and when to push yourself to do things. And the simplest way I can break it down is that when it comes to something I'm not sure I want to do, I try to picture myself in that situation, put myself there with all of my senses, and picture if I'm going to have a good time. If I'm feeling a little too tired to hang out with friends, and I don't feel like I could really show up for them that day, I try to picture myself in that situation, and if I feel like that environment would foster happiness and would invigorate me, and I would actually have a good time, then I will get myself to go. And you have to be honest with yourself. And if you feel like you're going to be this dim presence and you're going to regret going and you just need to take time that day for yourself, don't feel guilty about it. No one to say no. Your friends are gonna be there for you beyond that day. The other side of that is pushing yourself to do things. For me, this is exercising or taking time to meditate or to journal, which are all things I do want to do, but there's those days where you might not want to do them so much as you usually do. And right now in particular, it's winter here, so it's tough sometimes to get out and hike when you could be inside and warm and cozy. There's just no feeling like hiking. Doesn't matter the duration or the terrain, the weather. Anytime I get out, I am always able to clear my mind. And beyond clearing my mind, I just feel so connected with the surroundings. Ah, the fresh air, especially in the winter. So crisp and cold and wakes you up from the inside out. Today is just gorgeous in every way. And since the snow is melting a little bit on the treetops where the sun is hitting the branches, there's these thick water drops that will fall off really heavy and quick. And for just a split second, it'll catch the sun and get illuminated with every color in the rainbow. And it's just so fascinating to watch. The river is so soothing too. <sighs> Feels good to be out here. There's a bit of an opening in the ice right here. It's still frozen over, but 
it's not white, it's transparent. So I can see the stream running through and the rocks on the bottom and the bubbles. Ah, oh, it's so, so cool. Wow. Oh my gosh. And this idea of listening to your body also extends, for sure, into how you're eating. So lately, I have been paying extra attention to what I'm in the mood for. I feel like my body is able to tell me what it wants to eat. For example, if I'm really in the mood for something savory versus something sweet. And then I just try to get creative with what I make in regards to that. I've been making hydration a priority too and making sure I'm getting enough fluids. I've been having these little drink rituals with myself lately where I will make a matcha latte with some of my almond milk or just sip on some juiced vegetables. And when I do that, I just try to dedicate my entire time to just being totally present with that drink. And with every sip, really noticing the taste and the texture and appreciating all the good it's doing for my body. It's honestly a nice switch up to water. Finding things like green juice that help me stay hydrated and have fun doing it are great. I've also been really into tinctures lately, so at nighttime usually I'll come home, fill up a glass with some sparkling water, and then a few drops of ginger, ginkgo, and lion's mane because those are the tinctures I have available right now and a splash of cherry or cranberry extract and a little bit of kombucha concentrate and it's just really nice nightcap it's almost like a mocktail for your well-being and I love it and I've been paying extra attention to my morning routine because I feel like that little part of the day really sets the tone for the rest of it. I do like to start a lot of mornings by lighting some Palo Santo or sage just to kind of reset the energy and clear it, start the day fresh. I love the smell. And I just do a little circle around myself and my aura some days I'll cleanse the whole apartment, but I just like to do a little bit around myself. And I'll pour myself a 32 ounce mason jar of water and aim to drink that before I eat anything for the day, just to really hydrate myself. I love the energy I feel from drinking so much water. Sometimes I find it challenging to drink water throughout the entire day just because I get so busy and can forget. So getting that water in first thing in the morning starts the day off right at least. I notice a big difference in my skin when I stay hydrated too. And I feel like I'm kind of just fleshing myself out from the day before. So I'll sip on that while I'm working out. And speaking of working out, oftentimes when I wake up, I will also work out in the gym here in our apartment. Today I just did a full body workout, really light and sort of quick because Kyle and I are actually doing our first cross-country ski of the season today, so I don't want to wipe myself out completely. But when I do work out here, I'll usually pick a couple of muscle groups and work them out. Back and biceps or chest and triceps, leg and glutes, etc. And I'll focus on weightlifting here, whereas I then like to go hike and walk and run, swim for my cardio, and today the skiing will be the cardio. After working out, when I do morning showers, I like to try to keep the temperature on the cold side and move quickly. I'll also spray some eucalyptus oil, and when I'm in there, I just want to clear out my mind and then maybe think about a couple of things I have to get done throughout the day, just sort of a mental to-do list and organizing. For breakfast, I will usually make 
a smoothie bowl. I fluctuate between what I make for breakfast. Sometimes I'll do more of a savory breakfast with eggs and avocado, quinoa, and a ton of vegetables. And sometimes I'll do a superfood smoothie bowl packed with different fruits. And I'll finish it off with a bunch of nutrient-dense, colorful toppings. Just try to listen to my body and see what I'm in the mood for and start the day off with something that will help me feel good and keep me satiated for a while. We have a lot of plants here, so today they needed to be watered. It feels good to get that done before leaving too. And then I am good to go over to the office or to whatever project we're going to work on for the day. So if it's something I know is going to benefit me physically or mentally, I like to push myself to do it because I feel like I'll become stronger in both of those ways. I never regret pushing myself to go out for a hike or to take time to write about my day and what I'm grateful for. And I feel like the more you get yourself to do these things, they become more habitual and easy to do and you look forward to them more. So between these two different things, finding the balance that works for you to better your life. Check in with yourself, listen to your thoughts, your body, your emotions, see why they are feeling how they are and giving yourself the attention and the time to understand it and do what you need to do to have a great day. I've also been trying to listen to my body with rest a lot more. I very often have this mentality to just go and go and go and sometimes you need to rest. So that can be as simple as sleeping more or taking a day to relax from exercising. But really I've just been trying to get deeper sleep and sometimes I won't set an alarm. I'll let the sunlight wake me up with my circadian rhythm naturally. And when I do that, I feel really refreshed. Also have been trying really hard to avoid the snooze button because even if you hit that button, you snooze for 15 more minutes. I just feel so much more exhausted when I try to get up and it's way harder than if I had just gotten out of bed the first time. Another thing I've been involving myself in is positive affirmations. So I referenced some of my books and things I've heard in the past and online and I created a deck of what I thought were the most powerful affirmations and I will flip through them and say them out loud or in my head, doesn't matter. And I feel like it's just this really enriching enlightening practice of self-love and there's so many reminders in there. Actually for the holidays I made a bunch of these decks for people so I have some that I hadn't cut up yet right now so I can share some with you so you get the idea. Some of them are every day is a fresh start. I choose to take nothing personally for everyone lives in their own reality and that's a very important thing I've been living by too. I will be kind to myself and others today. I am allowed to take a break. I walk my path with ease and grace. I am open to receiving love and I radiate this essence. All of my problems have solutions. Everything that is happening now is for my ultimate highest good. Creative energy surges through me and leads me to new and brilliant ideas. My past is not a reflection of my future. I am connected to the abundant flow of the universe and easily manifest my dreams. There's just... A lot of really good stuff in there that makes your heart happy and puts a smile on your face which actually leads me to smiling in general when i am hiking or when i'm meditating i've been trying to put this nice soft smile on and my body just connects that smile with when i have felt positivity in the past and i really can feel it throughout my whole body and my mind just a simple smile just holding it there and Going off of smiling, laughing too. I have been trying so hard to laugh when anything frustrating happens. If I stub my toe or shatter a bottle, I just try to laugh because I don't want to have that anger manifesting in my space and in my body. And the more I've been doing it, the easier it gets. And I just feel like it's been so uplifting. I'm just so fixed on developing and nurturing this strong aura of light and love and positivity that I can share with people and it's so strong that it's palpable. Another thing I've been doing to stay calm and grounded has been sound baths and I actually just got my first crystal bowl which is set at the frequency for the third eye chakra. I love putting on different sound bowl meditations while I'm driving in the car 
and I figured it was time for me to finally get my own. Most of the time I'll do it by myself, but it's also such an experience to do it with your friends. Somebody's interested. <laughs> and I've been working on perspective shifts. The classic example I always hear is when you're cut off in traffic and you want to get so angry. Put yourself in that person's shoes and maybe, just maybe, there's someone that needs to get rushed to the hospital. They're injured or they're having a baby, some sort of emergency. And having that compassion unlocks this newfound sense of okayness with situations and you know even if that isn't the case if that's not what's going on in that car that cut you off just being able to level with the possibility of it and understand it helps you perceive it better and helps dwindle that frustration and rage and then branching again off of anger and frustration there's this idea of dealing with people we're not the biggest fans of and I'm not sure if I'm gonna get this right word for word, but Abe Lincoln said this quote one time that has really impacted my life and stuck with me. Something along the lines of, I don't like this man, I must get to know him. And that really rocked my world because this plays into that idea of empathy and putting yourself in someone else's shoes. And you know, there's people in our lives that we like that we don't love all of their traits and Perhaps this is just another one of those people, you know? Get to know them, see why they are the way they are. It's just a good practice, I think. And just being open to loving and accepting people. In regards to conversing with people, I've been working on listening a lot more. Oftentimes, I will have a thought pop into my head when I'm in the middle of a conversation and I get so eager to tell that person what my thought is. I wait for them to finish their story so I can insert it into there and I rarely end up paying attention to the rest of what they have to say. You have to just let those thoughts pass and leave your mind and so you can be really there and present for the conversation. You get these stronger bonds with people. People know you care when you actually listen. For example, if you are listening, and you're able to, instead of insert your own thing you wanna say, ask them a question that brings them deeper into what they were talking about. You'll just see the spark light up in their eye. They're so happy that you care. And it's a really good feeling, the gift of attention and time. I've also been letting reading become another common pastime for me. I do like reading a lot about educational things like herbalism, but I also have been reading a lot of self-growth books too and perspective shift books and just looking at life differently. And with meditation, it's always said to come into your breath. It's so nice to take belly breaths and hold it for a second and then exhale. When you start to pay attention, you'll realize Throughout the day, you're often not taking as deep and long of breaths as you could be. And when I'm in meditation, there are times where I do like to just completely clear my mind, but there's also this form of meditation I like where you really dig into your five senses. And you don't even have to be sitting to do this type of meditation. I actually often do it when I'm walking or hiking. I go into what do I see? What do I smell? What do I taste? What do I feel and what do I hear? And this really calms me down. It feels good to just be one with what's going on in that moment. Another thing I wrote about was gratitude and appreciation for life and all it encompasses. And doing this truly on such a deep level and understanding the fragility of it all and the sort of ephemerality of life in the sense of comparing it all to the grand timeline, just really being thankful for this life that I have, just being alive and the beauty of earth and far beyond the material world. I look into the wonderful souls in my life, my family and my friends and Kyle and my cat. Additionally, I like to refer to this as levels of truth. If I am in a predicament or an argument with a friend, I try to see the levels of truth and there's at least three. There's my truth, 
there's their truth and then there's the actual truth which can be hard to see when you both have been clouded by your own ideas of what's right and what's going on but I try to really step back far away from all of our views and look at them all and that helps me be less reactive and more logical in how I handle situations. I used to be very reactive and defensive and getting away from that has been excellent, <laughs> really. And that pretty much wraps up some of the practices I've been incorporating into my daily life to regularly attract and find peace and happiness. Of course, you don't have to do all of these things all the time. Different things work for different people. Different things are realistic for different lifestyles. But I have felt so eager to share some of what I've been doing. Maybe you were able to pull something from this video you haven't thought about doing before. Or maybe this video is the stepping stone to starting a more positive mindset. Whatever it is, I'm wishing you all more ease and bliss in your everyday life.